When you call your support line, your call may go through multiple persons until you finally get your problem sorted out. That is the chain of responsibility in action in the real world. You may be familiar with it if you have been using ASP.NET. Chain of responsibility is a behavioral design pattern that can be really useful if you want to refactor your code by decoupling and segregating responsibilities. This is the method that we'll be refactoring today. And this is a small example where applying the chain of responsibility can lead you to better and maintainable software. So what does this thing is doing? We have here basically a simple function that has the responsibility of finding if for a given order, from the order we'll know products, clients, total amount, we can give it a given discount. So you can imagine your sales team using this function under a given screen on your application. This is a simple example, but you can imagine what will happen when this business keeps growing and then you start bringing more discount rules on top of it and you keep updating this method and things start to get really messy. You get to a point where this class has too many responsibilities, it's hard to maintain, everyone is afraid of touching it, you see what will happen. And why the chain of responsibility is a good design pattern for this case? Because it will help us segregate the responsibilities while we keep the system decoupled from the consumers of this discount approval engine. Other key aspect to know that the chain of responsibility is a good fit for this case is that, as you can see, there's a given order on the rule. So first I check if it's one of my VIP clients, then I will check if the product is listed under stock clearance, and the uh, discount is below a given value, then last but not least, I will check an overall discount rule. And while I'm doing this thing in order, you can also see that every time that I check a given rule, I may return and break the cycle so I don't go to the next rule, or I keep going to the next one. And this is basically the idea of the chain of responsibility. Each handler will do his job, and then he will delegate the request to the next one. So let's see how we can refactor this. Before we start to refactor, just to let you know that we have a set of tests that will guide our refactoring to make sure that you didn't break anything. So the first thing that I will do is create a folder approvals. I will keep all the source code regarding this chain of responsibility inside of these approvals. So it's easy for you as a patron to grab the source code and see what it's doing. First thing that we need to have our chain of responsibility is having our base class that will orchestrate the request and will define the guideline for the ones implementing it. I will name it discount approval. I'm using the same naming under a different namespace just to show you this without a lot of changes in the existing code and you can focus on what has really changed for this refactor. First thing that we need to implement on our base class is a method that will be responsible to keep the next element on the chain. So let's create one that will be the set next. We need a field to store it. Let's set it. And now we add another method that will be the handle of this request. So we will receive the order and propose this count. Since this one is our base class, let's define that if I have a next element on the chain, let's handle that one. Otherwise, let's return false. So what does that mean? It means that when the implementations of this discount approval are executing, if they have something next, they will delegate to the next one. Otherwise, it means that we reach the end. So if we are in the end and we didn't return yet as true, it means that the discount is not approved. Now that we have our base class, let's start to implement the rules. If we look into the old source code, we can see here three rules. And let's start by the one for the VIP clients. So let's create a new class, implement base class, and override the handle method. And now is as simple as going to the old source code and copy everything that you need from there. Basically, when this element on the chain executes, what will happen is that I will check my rule. I will return and break the chain if I match the rule so the discount is approved. Otherwise, I will ask the base class to delegate this execution to the next hand. So I'm not coupled to the next handler and he also doesn't know me. Let's implement the other rules. Add one for the stock clearance. Once again, the same idea, override the base class and copy the source code that matters for that rule into your new handler. Add my last rule, override the base class, grab the source code from the old implementation into there and it's done. Now all those 
three rules are in individual elements of the chain. So I have segregated the responsibilities. So the next step is seeing how to execute them. To do that, what I will be doing first is removing the old approach, delete the old file. Now my tests are complaining, but since I'm using the same naming under a different namespace, it's easy fix. Let me show you what happens if I execute the tests now. You can see that three of my tests are failing. But I have two that are green. Why? Because if you look into them, you will notice that both of them are regarding the reject scenario. And since on my chain, when I don't have another element in the chain, I will return false, those ones are still green. So I need to configure my responsibility chain to make sure that I will fulfill the other rules. And doing it is quite simple. I go to my handler and I set the next element on the chain. And that one will be the VIP discount. Then I say that after executing the VIP discount, if I didn't approve yet, I will forward the request to the stock clearance one. Otherwise, I will call the global discount. What this means is that now it's quite simple to introduce new entries here on this chain of evaluation. I can change the order, I can load them dynamically, I can do a lot of stuff without needing to go to always to the same place and rewrite that source code with the risk of breaking stuff there. But let me run the tests. Perfect, we get back to a green state. Have you ever applied the chain of responsibility design pattern on one of your production systems? Please let me know. And please drop a comment if you are interested on seeing me exploring other design patterns, please leave a comment, tell me which one. And if you like this video, I think you will like this one as well. I will see you soon. In the meanwhile, keep it simple.